Hey everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today on our Wednesday lunchtime talk. I'm excited to uh, talk today a little bit about some of the plants and the seeds that we're going to be direct sowing to and some of the seeds that you can still direct sow right now, pretty much no matter where you live. So it will be great. And I want to take a minute to welcome all of you guys and see if you guys can hear me okay. I hope you all can. I would love to hear where everybody is from. I am Carrie. I am in Zone 7 in Oklahoma City. And I, uh, my husband and I are the creators of the From Seed to Spoon mobile app, which helps guide you through growing over 100 different fruits, vegetables, and herbs and um, give you exact planting dates based on your uh, based on your location. It'll pull the weather the weather station that's closest to you and calculate out based on the predicted frost dates. Uh, it's it's really exciting. Awesome! I see a fellow person from Oklahoma City. Welcome! I love it. Awesome! I love it. A bunch of people from Zone Seven, Oklahoma City, and South Carolina. Awesome! That's great. Well, welcome everybody. I am so happy to have a bunch of people from everywhere around here joining us today. And oh, it looks like we have some uh, some okras being uh, being grown and some cherry tomatoes. That's exciting. Oh, there's a lot of things right now that are growing out in our garden, and it's it's exciting. And I love to uh, I, I love to go out there and get some food and all of that. It's great. And um, it's not too late, too. If you guys haven't started growing, you can still plant things. And a lot of times we do a lot of succession planting. So I'll be planting things like continually, um, like I've already planted like summer squash and all of that. And then I'll just keep going throughout the summer. Oh, we got somebody saying it's really hot in Texas. Yeah, it is really hot here in Oklahoma today, too. I think they actually issued a heat advisory for us today. It's probably one of our first actual really hot days. We've uh, been really lucky getting a lot of rain and it's been super great. I've absolutely loved it. So welcome everybody. I'm really excited that you guys are all here. Please feel free to comment all throughout this and we will pull up some questions. I have a um, couple helpers that are that will be pulling up some questions for me up here and um, and that way, so if you guys have questions as we go, feel free to do, feel free to post them as we go. And also, I just want to mention too that we are going to be doing a giveaway at the very end of this. So make sure that you guys stay tuned to the very end where I'll announce the winner. So the giveaway is going to be for a one year free premium app subscription for the From Seed to Spoon app. And um, so that way you'll be entered to win if you comment over here too. So Make sure that you do that. And yep, if you are not familiar, this is our app right here. We um, we walk you through growing over 100 different fruits, vegetables, herbs, all that, like I already talked about. And then also give you some information for some pests. And also um, you can go through and log your plants too. So like whenever you plant out your seeds, you can put it in there. And that way it'll give you expected sprouting dates whenever you should be seeing little baby plants and whenever you can harvest them too. So it's really exciting. You can go through and stay, stay with your plant all through the, all throughout it. So I love seeing everybody from all across the United States. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the tough plants that love the sun and the heat and ones that you can actually get started right now today in most of the places that you live. So let's get started talking about some of the most common ones. So first of all, I know I mentioned this already. I actually remembered this time, but I wanted to make sure I mentioned it again. Make sure you stick around to the end. We have that giveaway that we're going to be doing for the free one year premium app subscription. So make sure that you guys stay tuned and comment over here to enter. So before I jump into specific plants, I just wanted to have um, just talk a little bit about some ways and like tips and tricks 
to go through um, planting and germinating seeds in the summer because it can be really difficult to germinate seeds in the summer when it is so hot outside and especially dry like it usually is. Not right now for us, but it's typically like hot and dry. Um, so just some pretty generic tips for planting seeds in the summer. Um, one thing that we do a lot of is whenever we go through and plant things, um, we go through and um, if we're having a tough time, we can, after we plant and water them in, we put a layer of burlap down. And you can see that in this picture right up here. And I just put a layer of burlap and then I moisten the burlap as well too. Now, I don't let that stay for too long. I just wait until the seeds germinate, but it helps to keep that area moist, um, especially when it is super hot out or dry. It helps to keep that area more moist. Also can help with like critters too. So if you're having issues with things like cats, mice, birds, things like that, it can really help with that as well. So um, that's one thing that I always do whenever I'm germinating and I'm having a difficult time because it is so dry and I don't want to be out there in the 100 degree temperatures watering all the time. So it's just one way to keep your plants a little bit more moist. And then also the um, mulch, mulching your plants will really help. So just having a layer of mulch down um, will really keep the soil a lot moister as well as cooler. So the plants will do a lot better because they're not quite as hot as the others that just have the soil. And also you won't have to water quite as often because that moist is, or that is helping to retain some of the moisture as well. So that really can help as well. And then just utilizing shade whenever you can. So if you don't have any, any trees or anything like that that you can use as doing some, some shade, we can use some shade cloth or we do some, or we do like living shade walls. Um, and also we have these arch trellises right here that we do for um, and it, for a lot of different things. So you can plant things that go arch around those trellises and then it creates shade below. Um, so either way, like living shade walls or shade cloths can really help to create some shade to give your plants a little bit of break. And then I see that Debbie has a great question here. She says, what is the best kind of mulch for garden boxes? So personally, what we use a lot of is, well, what we can find here around where we live. So um, leaves are always going to be an amazing source <clears throat> for you. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so dried leaves in the fall are amazing. They break down really fast. They'll help to add some nutrients into the soil. Um, and, and wood chips are something that we do a lot of as well. So we do... Um, we get some wood chips either from our local compost facility um, or, yeah, I mean, you can get them anywhere. We also do like some pine shavings sometimes. Um, there's a bunch of different things that you can do. Um, and, but those are typically the ones that, that we use most of the time. So those are the best ones that I would recommend. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about some of these specific things that you can grow. And I, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about beans first. So beans are probably, combination of beans and peas are probably one of my favorite things to grow because simply one plant can give you a whole bunch of beans and you can get a whole huge harvest from just one plant. It's amazing. So I feel like you feel way more successful whenever you have a whole bunch off of one plant. At least I do. I love having that success and being like, oh, look at all these beans I can go harvest. So I always love planting them. Um, and there's a couple different things that you can do. Um, there's the bush beans and the pole beans. So those ones, um, obviously they grow differently. The bush beans grow in bushes and they'll be ready to harvest mostly all at once. Um, whereas pole beans will grow in a trellis and they'll grow up. Like these are ones that we really like to grow up of our, our arch trellises that I showed you in that picture from before. 
Um, so they grow really well around like trellises and things like that. Um, and then they'll give you a continuous harvest. Now, these beans, depending on where you live, sometimes you can plant them all summer long. Um, for us, it tends to get a little too hot in the summer for them to keep surviving and giving us a harvest. So whenever it gets too hot, we switch to the southern peas, which is the black eyed peas. And these are awesome. Um, I absolutely love these two. They grow in a vining mat matter. So they go through and you can put them along the trellis and they will grow to just like the pole beans. And you can go through and harvest them in the heat of the summer. It is amazing. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love all of that. Um, I, again, like I, so what we do here in zone seven, we do bush beans and pole beans whenever it hits like summer or springtime. And then once it starts getting really hot, we switch over to the Southern peas. So right around now, and then we will switch back to the bush beans and pole beans here in like a month or so. And that way we kind of have like a rotation going. So we'll constantly have some sort of form of beans or peas growing. At, I mean, I honestly love having these. So I pretty much always have some sort of form of beans or peas growing in the garden, like at all times if I can. And then here I have just a few images. Uh, I was talking how I really liked to, to grow the beans over the arch trellises. Um, and this is a picture of our arch trellis that we have. And I have the beans just growing up above and trailing down below. So it's just so amazing because you can like walk through that trellis right there. And it's super easy to do those trellises. Um, this one right here is just simply a cattle panel. Um, just with some, um, I mean, some stakes in the ground, you can put it up against and some, and we use zip, zip ties just to attach them to support them a little bit. And then um, just grow things up above it and you can walk through it. I love these because I hang flowers on them. You can kind of see right there. I have some hanging pots um, with some flowers, helps to bring in some pollinators. Plus it looks super pretty. And that way I can, I walk through there. Absolutely love it. And I can go through and pull these beans off. Super easy to harvest. Absolutely love it. Um, something else that we've used before too are these pull bean growing towers. These things are awesome too. And I, um, I actually just used them for the first time last year and they are super fun. I just set it up uh, and then put a, bean plant along each little, I mean, it's kind of hard to see in the picture right there because it's a little small, but on the base of the plant, there's like different sections. So I put one plant or one seed along the side of each of them and the beans just grew up it. And so it was super cool. It was like this big, big thing of uh, beans growing. It was really exciting and I loved it. Okay. It looks like we have another question. So May I ask which beans would be best for zone 10A in a container? Um, so in a container, um, I would probably recommend doing some sort of bush variety. Um, and, and there are different ones. Depending on the size of your container, you may want to look at a dwarf one. There's a lot of different um, options too. So they have ones that grow a lot smaller or, um, or bigger. If you have a big pot, you can grow in too. Um, if you have like a trellis or something that you can put up against the container, you could do the uh, pole beans or something like that and do a couple in the back. Um, I've definitely done this before where I have a trellis inside of smart pots and then I put a couple pole beans or peas along the trellis. And then in the front, I'll, I'll go ahead and plant something different. Um, sometimes I do that and I plant like carrots or something like that. Usually, usually I do this with peas because I have, I have a really favorite pea variety. That's a dwarf one that I use for this. Um, it's a snow pea. It's so good, but I put that along the back line of the trellis and then I plant some carrots in front of it because they make really good companions. 
Um, so really just finding what would be a good companion to, you can plant together some things in a container maybe. Um, and we have all that information in the app as well too. And just a few other plants that it is not too late to plant, at least in my area and in a lot of areas too. A, a lot of these you can still plant by seed directly right now. And um, I will say that the smaller the fruit is, the more likely it's going to be a faster harvest for you, which is going to be what you want at this time. Um, so there are a lot smaller varieties like the mini watermelons that would be perfect for starting right now. Um, so all of these, like the watermelon, cantaloupe, pumpkin, those ones you'll want to go through and find the shortest days to harvest. And actually, if you're in the app, you can go over to types and then you can actually sort by days to harvest, which is what I typically do whenever I'm looking for something that I want to plant later in the season. And I just find the one that is the shortest and then I go through and I plant those ones. So typically those ones, again, are, are going to be the smaller ones. And I prefer to grow those anyways because they tend to be easier. And you're less likely going to have a problem with them. Um, we actually just lost a couple plants to a squash vine borer, which was very, very sad. Um, but they can attack the melon plants too and pumpkins and all that because they're all in the same family. Um, so we've definitely had issues with that in the past as well. So I like to make sure that I can get a harvest. So if I can get a faster harvest, I can be more likely to be successful too. Um, so we have the um, cucumbers also. Cucumbers are really good to, um, to plant still. And they grow, um, again, in a vining manner. So I plant those along a trellis and let them climb up and they'll give me a good harvest. Um, and they're going to be ones that are really good to, um, to, to grow now. Cause there's even a variety, I think that is like just barely over a month, I think it was like 40 or 50 days, something like that to, to first harvest. So, um, definitely check that out. Um, so definitely you can still do cucumbers by seeds and then um, summer squash. So any sort of zucchini, um, yellow squash, gourds, things like that, you can all still plant. There's a lot of them um, that you can still have time for a lot of places. Oh, it looks like Debbie had a question. Let's see. Are these pl from plants or from seeds for the fall and summer garden. I just like trying to start seeds indoors. I have no room. I feel you there. So I personally, for these summer ones, I wouldn't do any of these indoors. I would just start all of them from seed directly outside. Um, it'll be, it'll be a lot easier. You'll have a lot more success. You won't have to go through transplant shock or worry about taking care of them inside or anything like that. Um, Honestly, like all of these over here, I always direct seed them. Even in the spring when I'm planting, um, I go through and I, I start these directly from seed. So I'll do that and I do succession planting. So what I mean by that is whenever I first start planting, um, I plant once and then I grow like a couple weeks and then I'll plant an another couple here and there. And then again, I'll do that in another couple weeks. And that way, if something does happen to one of the other ones, like squash vine borer, squash bugs, or any of those nasty critters get to it, or I have an issue, um, you never know. Um, or you can also just have a good harvest that is sporadic. So that way you're not getting like all of your watermelons at once. You can enjoy it all throughout the winter. So um, I do a lot of succession planting and I do it all outside. Um, so Carrie wants to know, I have and am growing a cucumber salad bushes. How big do the cupcakes get when they are mature? Um, so it really depends. Um, yeah, I, I, cucumbers I'm, I'm getting. So, um, so it really depends on the type of variety that you have. Um, so 
I would go off of like how it looks too. So you want to make sure that it doesn't start to turn like yellow or soft on you. Um, so whenever the cucumbers start filling out, they're a good green color. They're not super firm, but um, soft-ish, but not too soft. That's around when you'll want to harvest. But really all of the... Um, Cucumber varieties are going to be so different because there are so many different types of, of cucumbers out there. There's the um, there's a lot of pickling varieties. There's some that grow really large. Um, so it really just depends on what type. So really just looking at your cucumber too and seeing the difference um, and making sure that they don't turn yellow on you is the biggest thing. Then you'll know that that it's too big at that point. And then I don't know if we really talked about okra yet, but okra is definitely something that does really well in the summer. Um, it takes a lot of the heat. It loves our heat here. Um, so we are constantly growing okra. We get huge okra harvests throughout the entire summer. Um, I feel like no matter what heat we throw at it, it does really well. Um, and then the key to okra too, you just want to make sure to harvest them when they're smaller or else they're going to taste a little bit like crunchy and like get a little bit like fibrous almost. Um, they're still good for some things at that point, but I always prefer to harvest them when they're smaller and then they, they just, they taste so good. Even directly just like off of the plant is so good. So if you haven't tried growing okra yet and you have space in your garden, I definitely recommend giving it a try because it will do really well in your heat that you are having right now. Okay, we have a couple okras and not enough for more than one person yet. Don't want those pods to get tough. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, uh, you want to make sure to harvest them when they're still smaller and sweet and not to let them get really big and tough or else, yeah, they're pretty much just good for gumbo at that point, at least for me. Or sometimes I will let them just stay on there too, especially if it's at the end of the season. I'll let them stay and turn brown on there so that way I can save the seeds and that way I have them for next time. So um, sometimes I'll do that if it's towards the end of the season and just let them hang out and um, dry and get some seeds. And th so this is a wider picture too of our arch trellises that we use. And I grow quite a bit of things up these. So you can grow any sort of these melons. You can do any sort of cucumbers, any of those that we talked about just now um, that are vining, you can grow up these as well. Um, especially if you're going to be doing the ones that are the smaller mini watermelons and all of that. Um, a lot of the times you won't even have to support them because they are so tiny. But if you need to, I mean, you can simply like tie some old pantyhose um, and help to support it. But there's a lot of things that you can do to help just like stake them up. Um, and then I also put a picture up here of this melon cradle too, because we do, um, it is good to have your melons or um, whatever you have on the ground that's vining. Um, up off of the ground, it can really help with the pests because it will be devastating to you if you come by and, um, and a rat has eaten a lot of your plant. And it is so sad. It's happened to us before. Um, very, very sad. Um, but uh, it definitely helps with things like um, rotting as well. So especially if you have the um, uh, if you have a lot of moisture, if you're getting a lot of rain or if you overhead water, um, anything like that. So this will be super helpful for you just to keep it up off the ground, help keep it protected. And you'll have definitely a lot healthier melons for it. So there are definitely still a lot of flowers and herbs that you can still be planting right now as well. You, um, and this is definitely not even all of the ones that you can still do, but I just wanted to make sure that I hit like the main ones um, and our favorite ones as well. 
Um, we grow a lot of sunflowers and sunflowers are definitely something that you can be planting all summer long. Um, absolutely love it. And they can really be beneficial in the garden as well. They help to, um, in some ways, they can help to attract pests, which I know doesn't sound like a great thing, but it keeps the pests off of your other plants. So that way it'll go to like your sunflowers instead and keep your food better. So um, sunflowers have a lot of amazing benefits. Plus you can eat the seeds too, um, which is really great. And they're really pretty. There's a bunch of different varieties that you can do. Um, lots of them um, from smaller dwarf varieties to huge like mammoth ones that just tower over top of us. So it's super fun to grow sunflowers all season long. I love it. Um, marigolds are another one that's very similar to sunflowers because marigolds can really help to um, help to give um, like help to protect like your tomatoes, peppers, things like that. So marigolds are one of my favorite companions that I use and I plant them by seed even now and they do great. Like I, I'll put them whenever I plant a tomato or pepper or anything like that, I'll plant a marigold alongside with it and it'll help too for pest management. So um, marigolds are not only pretty, they, they help for pests too. They're great. I love them. And then cosmos and are, are another really good flower that you can grow all summer. And zine, same with zinnias. Zinnias will continue to uh, flower and bloom for you all summer long. So it's another really good one. Um, and it's one of those that you can do like the cut and they'll keep flowering for you until you get to your freeze. Um, and I love growing zinnias too, because you can actually just let them go um, to seed and the seeds will fall down. And then the next spring, you'll have a bunch of little baby zinnias coming back too, which is amazing. So that way you can have like almost like a wildflower patch. So I definitely always recommend planting zinnias too. Oh, and so Debbie was asking, is it too late to start flowers from seed? Absolutely not. Um, a lot of these you can plant now and still get a at least one or two rounds of blooming from them um, before you have your first frost. Um, I mean, depending on where you live, um, but most all of these you can still be starting from seed right now. Um, and then some other ones. Oh, let's see. How do you fix sunflower seeds? I've never grown any or fixed them. So, I mean, what we do, we don't necessarily like do anything with them, but you can just eat them directly off. Like we'll just, what we do is put like a little Ziploc baggie over top of the flower whenever they're getting close to ready. Um, and then you kind of just like, sh you can like shake it <laughs> into there and pull them off. Um, and then you'll have like a Ziploc baggie of the sunflower seeds, but it tastes super amazing. Just like that. Like you can just eat eat it directly like that. And, um, it tastes way better than the bagged stuff that you can buy at the grocery store. Um, I mean, it's way more fresh. It tastes so much different. It's, it's amazing. The difference that you can taste. Um, I trust me, you just have to try it. It tastes amazing. <laughs> um, there are a lot of other, other flowers and herbs that you can do things like lavender and salvia, um, bee balm is another one of my favorites too, um, because it can really help to bring in pollinators too. Super pretty. And it grows really well. It's just super hardy and, um, it'll take a lot of different weather and different watering, um, like droughts and issues like that. So it's definitely one that I always recommend to grow as well. Um, and then of course, basil is probably going to be, um, my, my favorite herb to grow over the summer. And again, you can continue to grow basil from seed, um, right now. Um, you can probably, I don't know the exact dates for me, at least, um, I can probably still plant it by seed for quite a while and still get a little bit of a harvest from it. 
Um, but at the very least, basil also works really great as a companion plant. It helps to like improve the flavor of tomatoes that are around it, which is awesome. And it also helps to repel pests too. So I absolutely love basil. Um, we grow a whole bunch of it and it is really easy to grow from seed too. We just take a packet of the basil seeds, just kind of sprinkle it around where we want. Um, actually uh, posted a really funny video of a place where a basil had gone to seed from the previous season and it had just exploded and taken over that area. So I didn't even really have to plant many. Um, so it was really great. Um, so Amy wants to know, will bee balm continue to bloom throughout the season or does it bloom once and then start to die back? So bee balm will continue to bloom for um, several months in the summer, um, typically more like the, the mid to late summer time. Um, and then it will come back for you the next year too. Um, so it is one that will continue to give you flowers, but, um, but yeah, it'll bloom for you though in the, um, in the summertime, the later summertime. Um, Ashley says, is lavender better in ground or in a container? So I would personally recommend doing a container. That's, that's where I do a lot of mine at least because, um, lavender really doesn't like to be too like wet logged. Um, so if you are, especially like somebody that lives in a wet area or, um, anything like that, um, I would definitely recommend doing a container just because it doesn't really like having its roots wet too, too often. And, um, it can be really finicky with that. So making sure to give it periods where it dries out is important and having a container will be a lot easier for that. Okay, so is lavender a perennial? So there are actually a bunch of different types of varieties of lavender. So there actually are some perennial lavenders and there's some annual lavenders. So you just really need to look at the variety and depend what you want. So um, the annuals are definitely going to be more prolific for you and give you more flowers, um, but you won't have them for a long period of time. You'll just have them over the, you know, the spring to fall time. Um, but the perennials will be really pretty for you as well too, and last you a lot longer. Is it too late to plant lavender from seed? So, um, you can definitely do some lavender by seed still. Um, lavender is one that I do tend to do a transplant for, but it is definitely one that you can still do by seed, um, right now. Um, and it, it should do well for you. Okay. Well, we can move to the next slide. Okay, I know this is not outdoors right here, but I do want to mention one thing too. So if it is really hot where you are and you don't really want to go outside, I can completely understand that. Um, and you may want to still be eating healthy and still have an option of something to grow. Um, microgreens is a really good option for you. Um, microgreens are super simple and park seed actually has a really good, um, microgreens whole kit that they sell, which is amazing. And they have this, this, uh, it's up here at the very top. Um, they have the, the tray and the dome and then the seeds that you just put and you sprinkle on top and that's really all you need to do. I mean, sprinkle them on top, moisten, put the lid on put it underneath the, um, underneath some grow lights. I have some grow lights over here, um, that I put them under and I really just leave them be for like a week and then poof, you have a whole bunch of microgreens and they are so good. They are super healthy for you. Um, because we have a lot of, um, I mean, they have a lot of nutrients in them, especially because they're so tiny, like all the nutrients are all in that little tiny plant right there. So it's a really great way to help to make sure to eat healthy whenever maybe your garden isn't producing as well as you want it to, or if it's too hot for you outside, but you still want to grow something. This is a really great option. 
Um, and I have a lot of videos too about how to get microgreens set up. I think it's called like microgreens 101 or something like that. Oh, there it is. Yeah. The ultimate beginner microgreen guide. Um, cause I go through everything from like beginning to end on it. So like how to get it set up and then how to harvest it even. So it goes all the way through. Um, and it's, again, it is super simple and it is something that I really, really recommend any, anybody that is really wanting to eat healthy and add some greens into their diet when it's too hot outside. This is a great way to do it. So I just wanted to make sure that I threw a little bit in about some microgreens. Okay, so I have come to the end of all of the stuff that I was going to make sure that I hit. And I wanted to take this time to see if anybody had any questions that we didn't answer during this time yet. Um, so please feel free to put all of your questions over here in the comment section. Remember, every time you comment over here, you get entered to win for the free app subscription, which we will be announcing the winner here shortly. So make sure that you are posting over here. Okay, so do we have any questions that we're going to go through? How about real straw? Okay, so for mulching, I'm assuming here. Um, I avoid using any sort of straw um, just because we've had issues in the past um, with herbicide issues. Um, so we've, we've definitely avoided using that in the past. So for me, I always stick with the things that I know are going to be for sure safe. So I stick to the pine shavings or wood chips or the leaves, things like that. Any tips in growing lemongrass? <laughs> okay. Um, so lemongrass, um, well, I mean, we've grown lemongrass a few times here. Typically we grow them in containers though. Um, I would say, I mean, keeping it as, I mean, not overwatering it is going to be important. Maybe giving it plenty of sun though and letting it, um, I mean, gosh, yeah. I don't know how hot it actually gets there where you are, but um, it should be, it should be doing pretty well. It all, I mean, all lemongrass really needs is a whole bunch of sun. Um, so that's definitely something that I would make sure that it just gets plenty of sun. Um, that's the biggest thing that I would say for it. Um, I've never really had a lot of issues in the past with our lemongrass. So, um, I don't have a lot of tips for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. The best way to get rid of aphids. Okay. Well, I will say aphids are one that are fairly easy to get rid of, um, hopefully. Um, but simply just hitting it with a little bit of a spray of water from a hose and knocking them down into the soil can help. Um, and then also just making sure you are having a good environment for ladybugs. Um, so ladybugs are, can definitely be your best friend whenever you're dealing with aphids and you can actually purchase ladybugs. If you didn't know that super fun. Um, I actually, so, um, I do want to mention, we did have a pest webinar on, on this topic. So I, I definitely covered a lot of stuff on aphids. Um, so make sure to look that up. Maybe they can put in a link to the, in the comments to that webinar that we did. Um, but it was a really great one. Um, and it talked a lot about the tips and tricks for various pests. And I talked about aphids too in that. Okay. So, so far I have luck in using pine shavings from my pet bunny's litter box. Oh yeah. That's fantastic. I mix it with my amended soil. I can only do container gardening and use five gallon buckets because the ground swirls. Yes, that is fantastic advice. And if anybody has any pet bunnies, I would for sure be using that because they are super helpful. Their manure will be very amazing to have. They are great composters. So that'll be fantastic. Thanks for sharing. 
Okay. I have a ton of tomatoes on the vines. I have fertilized several times and we've had tons of rains. Um, however, my tomatoes are really get aren't really getting any bigger. I'm getting, guessing. Um, so probably the issue is the heat right now. Um, I mean, depending on where you are, where you're living, um, tomatoes don't grow super amazing whenever it gets too hot. I typically say like 95 ish, 90, 95 ish. Um, they'll stop producing and stop really growing that well, but they won't die. They'll just kind of go like slow down a little bit, but then they'll pick back up whenever the temperatures kind of cool back down. Um, so it could be the heat. Um, it's possible maybe the sun. Um, if it's not getting enough sun, that could be an issue as well. Um, so maybe one of those issues. So th that would be what I would recommend without seeing it or knowing where you're living. In the app, how do you filter seeds by the fewest days to harvest? Okay, so whenever you go in the app and you go to um, one of the plants, you'll go over to the type section and then it'll pull up all the different seeds that Park Seed carries. And then there's a sort button that you can click on and then you can select either sort by name or sort by um, days to harvest. So if you click that days to harvest button, it'll then put the shortest days to harvest up on top and the longest to the bottom. So um, that's something that I always do whenever I'm looking at seeds pretty much. Unless I'm looking for a specific type of seed, I always do that days to harvest sorting. Okay. Do you have any tips for planning backwards from the fall frost or freeze for the latest planting date in the spring and summer? I'm worried I'll start seeds too late and not get enough yield. Okay. So, well, honestly, yes, I do download the from seed to spoon app. Um, so that's, that's honestly all I do is I go into the app and I look and I pull up the dates um, and it'll say exactly like when your fall planting period is. Um, and it'll say um, like how late you can plant it. So that way you can get a, uh, that way you can get a harvest from it before it gets too cold, hopefully. Um, so, I mean, that, that's honestly the biggest reason why we made the app was to help us with planting dates. Um, that was initially our goal because I, I, we kept having to look up like when was the, or when's our night or first fall frost date? When's our first or last spring frost date? I could never remember. And then it was always the seed packet said four weeks before. And I'm like, oh, now I have to do math. <laughs> so the app just makes it a lot easier. Um, so it'll give you exact dates too for the, for summer and fall as well. So that way you have planting and you don't have to think and do any math it makes it a lot easier. Okay. Kim wants to know, what do you do when tomato leaves curl or when leaves turn black? So curling could definitely be, um, a sign of many different issues. Um, so some things it could be, um, like the heat, like excessive heat or, um, watering issues, um, as well as herbicide. So if you had any, any sort of herbicide sprayed nearby, um, it can definitely cause some, some issues with the leaves curling as well. Um, there are many viruses that can cause the leaves to curl. Um, and that's for, for that reason, like I always, whenever I'm picking out tomato varieties, I always try and pick ones that are resistant to diseases that I've had issues with in the past. Um, so that's one reason, like, I love like the Parks Whopper so much because it is resistant to a lot of these various viruses and, um, and all of that. Um, so besides that, I mean, it could be some insects as well. Um, they can sometimes cause leaves to curl. Um, but if they are turning black, black would definitely be bad. Um, so 
I mean, what I would recommend doing, I mean, depending on what the issue is, you can kind of see a little bit, um, try and see if you can find evidence of what the issue might be. Um, and then you might want to try like trimming the bottom leaves. Um, if the, just the bottom leaves are having issues. Um, the biggest thing is to make sure to keep like your hands and any equipment that you use on it, like to cut or trim or do anything like that. Um, keep those clean. So like clean them after you do it. So that we don't spread just in case it is a virus or something that we don't spread it to your other tomatoes. Okay, so I think um, we're going to go ahead and announce the winner for our giveaway. And then we will take a few more questions after that. But we wanted to go ahead and announce the winner. Do we have a winner here for the one year free, free premium app subscription? The winner for that, let's see, they're going through and running it through our our program right now. So let's see. <laughs> have to wait for them. So um, the winner is going to be able to have one year free premium app subscription. So you'll get to go through and log all your plants on to our premium version. So you can go through and put all your plants in. So when you're in there doing all of the, um, oh, sorry, I, I didn't even see that they posted the winner already. So <laughs> The winner is Debbie Blakely. Um, so she's going to have a one year free premium app subscription. So congratulations, Debbie. And Debbie, what you need to do is email us at um, info at seedtospoon.net and we will get you all set up. Everything you need to do to get that one year app subscription for you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'm so glad you love all of our videos and podcasts. That's amazing. Thank you. And if you guys don't already follow us, make sure that you guys are following us here on YouTube. Um, I post shorts pretty much every single day. Um, we do these webinars um, pretty much every two weeks. We do one of these live webinars over different topics, and then we always do Q&A sessions as well. Um, so, um, yeah, so make sure that you're following us already. Okay, so we'll continue to do just a few more questions here for um, a few more minutes. I know we have a whole bunch more. Um, we'll try and get through as many as we can up until the end of the hour. Um, but if we don't get to your question, I want to make sure that I point out Growbot. Um, I don't think I've talked about Growbot yet today. Um, so Growbot is a feature in our From Seed to Spoon app that you can go through. It's an AI chatbot. Um, you can go through and click on Growbot and ask it any sort of gardening question that you have. And it'll come back with, um, I mean, most of the time it's amazing responses. Um, so I go through, I use Growbot too. I go through and I'm like, oh, what is, you know, I, I don't even... Oh, well, what did I ask here? What are good tomato companion plants? So, I mean, you can really ask it anything that you want um, related to gardening and it'll, it'll help you out. So if I don't get to your question, try that out. Um, but afterwards too, I will go through questions and um, I typically go through and make videos and shorts and all that too, based on your guys' feedback and questions too. So don't worry, we'll get to it. <laughs> Okay. What is an easy above ground irrigation system that one can install? So we've used several different irrigation systems ourselves um, since we've been gardening. We've done different things such as making our own, like making a DIY PVC pipe one. Um, it was fairly simple. I mean, it, it's not like super easy, but you just attach um, different PVC pipe fittings together and um, drill some holes in it, connect it to a hose, and it'll go out wherever you drill the holes. Um, we have videos um, from the past, like all about how we did this. Maybe they can pull one up and put one up here in the comment section. Um, but, oh, yep, there it is. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
So we have videos all about like how we made that too and how it works. Um, there's also like the, that black tubing, like the soaker hoses, things like that. All of that is super simple to, to connect in from a hose um, and you just line it back and forth, kind of like kind of make little S shapes along, um, along the different, um, your different planters, or if you're doing in ground, however you're using it. Um, so yeah, there's several different types. Um, so yeah, any sort of drip irrigation. Um, yeah. <laughs> Tips for fighting cucumber beetles. Okay, so cucumber beetles are ones that I'm going to say are, well, I, I hate to say it, but they're actually one of my favorite pests to battle because there's some easy solutions. Um, if you are having issues with cucumber beetles, I typically put up those yellow sticky traps. Um they are super simple. Like I just, I order these yellow sticky traps. You um, take the side or the, the sides off and then I just hang it up on like a trellis or a post or something nearby there. And it'll capture the cucumber beetles. Um, it also captures a lot of um, various pests as well. Um, I know people tend to be scared of using those just because of, um, pollinators and things like that. But I've actually never had any issues with that before. Um, I mean, the most beneficial thing that we've had ever land on our yellow sticky traps are the, um, are flies. So whether or not you consider them beneficial or not, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to, uh, let, let some of those flies go for the sake of fighting off these cucumber beetles. So that's probably the easiest thing that I would recommend doing for cucumber beetles. There's a lot of other things you can do too. Um, make sure you check out that webinar that I did. Um, it was probably about a month ago. Um, it's, it's posted live on our YouTube um, and it talks more in depth about um, tips and tricks for cucumber beetles too. And in our app too, there's a section for cucumber beetles too. I wanna point out um, that you can go through um, the pests and go to cucumber beetles and it'll talk through um, different organic methods and things that we've used in the past. Okay, what is the best way to keep weeds away? They always wear me down. Oh, 100% agree with you. Weeds are, oh, yes. Um, so what we do is um, we like to mulch a lot, um, especially if it's in the garden beds. Um, so mulching will help with the weed control. Um, if it is around your garden beds, what we do is we lay down like um, we lay down a layer of cardboard and then we put wood chips on that and that's our walkways. But that can really help to smother out like any sort of weeds or grass issues that you have um, there as well. Um, and then in the winter time, I would recommend doing like some sort of cover crops, um, things like that. And that can really help to prevent other weeds from you know, growing during that time and taking over your bed. So those are two things that I would uh, definitely recommend. Um, yeah, let's see. So Jennifer says, do I need to do anything to refresh a bed before I plant seeds again? I had vine borers and ants. Ooh, yeah. So, um, I mean, one thing you can do is um is go through and use a propane torch on that soil but i mean it will it'll definitely kill the pests that you had issues with but you may kill any good bugs too that was in that area um but definitely what i would do is um i would probably just till it up and make sure you don't have any of those issues anymore still um, add some fresh compost to that area. Of course, I always do any time in between, um, any time between plantings, I always add fresh compost. Um, but yeah, I would recommend just at least like um, tilling it over and then um, adding fresh compost. Um, you can also do like putting black plastic over top 
and uh, and that'll help to get rid of all the pests. And that'll help with the weeds too that we had issues with uh, before with the previous person. Um, but if you do that for like a month or so, like it, you'll the sun will help like get that area all good for you. Okay, any tips for a balcony garden? So I would recommend, so if you haven't heard of Smart Pots, I would definitely check them out. Those are some of our favorite, favorite fabric raised beds. They're super durable um, and they work amazing. So they are, um, you simply just order them, unwrap them, fill them with soil and plant them. So um, I would recommend doing some containers on your garden um, or on your balcony. Um, and depending the size of your balcony, I'd probably stick with some that are more um, dwarf varieties. Um, and then there's also a filter too that you can go through on the app to see if there's any that can tolerate some shade. Because um, typically with, you know, balconies, I'm assuming that there's probably some, um, some shade at least. So I would look for some of the plants that can tolerate just at least some shade. So on the app, there's a filter for tolerate shade. Um, so I would look and pick out some of those plants and you'll have a lot more success. Okay. Well, we have come to the end of the hour. So thank you so much, everybody. Oh, that's really sweet. I'm really glad that we have a new follower <laughs> and somebody that's joining us now. Um, so thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. It was fun sitting here and chatting about different plants and pests at the end and all of that. Um, I appreciate all of you guys spending this time with me. And make sure you, if you are not already following us, that you do. So that way you guys can get notified too whenever we do our next webinar. We do these pretty much every two weeks. So here in two weeks from now, I'm not sure the date, but two weeks from now, I'll be talking more about garden stuff. So make sure that you guys all join us and we look forward to hanging out with you again. Thanks everybody for hanging out. We'll see y'all next time.